morning everybody um, we'll give it a couple of minutes while people just log on so welcome this is our fourth fourth Saturday night um, takeaway so far we've done a Chinese we've done some uh, southern baked chicken which proved really popular saw loads of people doing that um, we did a curry I've seen a lot of people doing the onion barges that we did that was really popular and then this week you all requested fajitas so we're going to do some fajitas today. Um, the other weeks I've run up and down and used all three eggs. Um, but today we're going to try and cook the whole thing on one egg. Uh, so it's just like it would be for you at home. Um, I've started doing a little bit of prep, um, but uh, you'll see that in a minute. Uh, so um, we're going to cook three different things. Well, we're not going to cook the first one. We're just going to make it. So we're going to make a guacamole uh, to go with our fajitas. Uh, we're going to do a toasted corn salsa. Um, so we're going to toast the corn and then make that, take that and put it into a salsa that we're going to make. And then we're going to do some dirty skirt fajitas. So we're going to use skirt steak. Um, it's a piece of steak that um, isn't used that often. Uh, it comes from the diaphragm. From If you think about a cow, if its legs were like that and it's you know, like that, um, it's from the front portion, the top portion. Uh, of the diaphragm so we're going to use some skirt relatively cheap the piece of meat I'm going to cook with today is probably less than five pounds um, I tend to buy it from bookers uh, and it's about a you get about eight or nine big steaks in there for about 40 quid so um, uh, it's not particularly good quality meat but uh, yeah, you know it's a great great uh, cut uh, and something we, we can enjoy today so we'll do some dirty skirt so we're going to cook that dirty we're also going to do some other dirty cooking uh, just you know show you what you can do with your egg um, and hopefully you'll enjoy that um, so Helena is everyone joining up yeah we've got about 45 people 45 on so far um, as usual uh, ask any questions you want to um, Helena will take them down and then when we get little breaks we'll, we'll re I'll, she'll read them back to me I'll read them back to you and uh, and then we can try and answer those and of course any questions that we don't answer feel free to to get in contact with us after the show so right usual story got to show you who's been involved this week now we were going to do this with a gimbal on our camera to make it a bit more steady um, but we're not very good at it yet so uh, we've been that off and we're going to go as normal uh, Andy's having a good giggle there uh, um, so we'll just go as we were and um, we'll try and get that ready for next week so I'll grab this I'm going to spin it round so we've got Andrea morning <laughs> So my sister-in-law living with us at the moment, uh, still. still, still <laughs> until the end of lockdown. Uh, um, anyway, so she's doing all the camera work. We've got Helena over here. Morning. Uh, she's on the iPad, taking down the questions and right next to my prep area. New addition to the garden this week. Don't know whether I like it yet, but a surface tree. So we've got all of our surfaces uh, in an old sleeper that I've bolted to the wall. Um, yeah, I had a bit of fun making that with a chainsaw anyway. Um, so Andy there you go thank you so um, let's get straight on to it so let's have a look in here um, first cook um, is uh, we're going to do um, these dirty skirt fajitas but I've already started with some onions so Andy if you have a little look in there what you should be able to see is directly on the charcoal we've got three onions in there this is the bit that we lit in the middle and they're, they're just sitting around it we've had the egg at about 150 degrees C somewhere around there and these have just steamed away um, they're nice this one's a little less soft but these two really nice and soft so they've been in about 45 50 minutes um, if i grab this one what you should be able to see is it's well you can't really see it, it they're bubbling and steaming away and all the juices are coming out of them so uh we're going to take those uh, i'm going to put them to one side uh, so i'm just going to put them into our pan which is right next to me and those uh, have been cooking in the skins. You can see, look at that one, that's popping its middle right out. Um, and those have just been going juicy and sweet and cooking through. And we get, we're gonna let those cool a little bit before we use them later. Just take a couple of bits of those out. So you can see in our egg, um, charcoal in the middle is the only bit going. Um, I'm just gonna put, um, I'm using the expander system, but you could just use your stainless steel grid. I'm just gonna put that in there, um, shut the lid, and we're going to turn it up to about 200 degrees. Um, so I'm opening up a bit more because it's low. 
what I want to do is get that to 200 degrees and I want to start uh, to caramelize, to, to brown off some sweet corn. So I've got corn on the cob here. I'm just going to put those straight over the flames and every couple of minutes I'm going to come back and turn those over with the, tor with the four uh, tongs uh, let them go brown on the top and then we're going to use those in our salsa. Okay, so quick and easy. The egg will get up to temperature pretty quickly. I just need to watch it. I've opened up the regulator here, but if you were using the, the daisy wheel, you'd open the top of the daisy wheel and just have the, the daisy wheel bit fully open and then just a little bit more uh, with the top slid open. And down here, I'm about two and a half fingers wide at the bottom, and that should bring it up to around 200 degrees just to do that, that core. Okay, any questions, Helena? No, we're gonna show about Oh, a couple of hangovers apparently this morning. So uh, I believe Julie Connor, uh, my partner in crime, who runs uh, runs uh, a lot of the private meat smoke fire classes, uh, had one too many, perhaps uh, Cosmos last night. So um, hangover. Any other hangovers? Yeah, Toby White. Toby White uh, from Fullborn. Yeah. Toby White. Toby White with a hangover. Oh dear, um, not good. Anyway, uh, well, get back on it now. That'll solve that. Um, anyway, we'll go over here, we'll do some guacamole. So this bit isn't cooked. Um, I've got some ingredients here and we're just gonna whiz through this. This is super, super fast and easy. So I'm gonna take some avocados, um, just run the knife around them, flip them in half, knife into the stone, pop it out. That one's gone on the floor, it doesn't matter. Sounds like Neil Dickinson's hanging too this morning. Oh dear. <laughs> oh, and Steve O'Hara. Oh, lots of hangovers this morning. So Neil Dickinson and Steve O'Hara. So, uh, okay, right. So we're just coring, uh, uh, taking, uh, I'm just gonna use a food blender. We're just taking those avocados out. I'm just gonna use a spoon to run it around whole and pop those in our, in our blender bowl. Same with that. Oh. Are they mm. all loaning up to it now? Oh. And Mrs. Scott. Oh, oh dear. the other sister. That's no good. Uh, right, so we've got in there, I have avocados. I'm gonna take a bit of onion. So all I'm gonna do, just um, slice it. And I'm gonna take about that much onion to go in it. Just pop that in. Um, into our, um, we're gonna use uh, just a blender here, uh, just to mix it up. Um, so we've got that, bit of garlic. Uh, we want about half a clove of garlic for this. So whoops, just take a garlic clove, take the ends off. Easiest way to peel it, put your knife on the top and bash it, <laughs> and then it will just peel, simple as. And then we're just gonna take half, just cut it finely. That'll do me. The blender will do the rest for me. So we get that in there. Um, I'm gonna take a little bit of tomato. Now, if you can get whole tomatoes, that's great. I couldn't get them yesterday. I like to use those uh, Italian, uh, the posher ones. These are just Sainsbury's or Tesco's. But we want about a spoon of tomato in there, maybe a little bit more. Um, because it's not the posh tomatoes, keep that, we're gonna use that for the salsa. Because it's not the posh tomatoes, I'm gonna to add a tiny bit of tomato puree in here. So we'll put a tiny bit in, literally half a teaspoon. Uh, oh, I don't need to do that. Right, bit of chili sauce. So I'm using sriracha, uh, but we're just gonna have put in probably a teaspoon, something like that, a little bit of chili sauce, um, some salt and some black pepper. This is the black pepper going in, a little bit of salt, probably a teaspoon of salt, maybe a bit less, molten salt that is, uh, a little bit of coriander. Probably not too much, a bit of coriander. And then we need some acid in there to go with it. Um, you could, if your tomatoes aren't really ripe, you could put a little bit of sugar in there. Um, so we're just gonna put um, some lemon juice, um, some lime juice in there. So I'm just gonna get my lime squeezer, pop it in. Bit of lime juice in there. And a tiny bit of olive oil, just to um, that's just a light olive oil just to bind it and then I'm going to take it over I've got a mixer over here that's turned itself off on the lid one second 
So I'm just using a Thermomix, but uh, it could be any blender. What you want to do is blend it, but don't blend it too much. You want it to be chunky. So I'm just gonna turn this up to about four and a half. That will probably do it. Get my spatula. Just push it down inside. We'll come and have a little look handy in a second. That'll do me. Pop that there. And we have a nice guacamole now, fresh, uh, ready to go onto our fajitas. Uh, much better than that shop bought stuff. So let me just grab a, a bowl. I'll bring it over here. <laughs> and you want to keep it fairly lumpy. I hear laughing, Helena. What's going on? Someone says, of course you've got a Thermomix. Of course I've got a Thermomix, yeah. You might have seen these things. They're a... Uh, um, they're probably the best blender there is out there but it's not just a blender so um, it cooks this little bowl has a heating element in it so it will cook um, it will chop it will do risottos it has recipes built in it does everything um, so yeah it's my my one and only uh, blender really that I use I don't have a food processor this is it um, right now we're going to do oh let's have a look at our corn so starting to get toasted up needs to be a little bit hotter so I'll turn it up a little bit more all we're just trying to do is cook it a little bit but just get that nice toasted element on it so just pull that down open it up a tiny bit more just because it's been off and we'll start on the salter while we get ready for that so Nikki cook no Oh, Nicky Montero. Hello, Nicky Montero. Sorry, I'm just going to blow my nose. Nice to have you with us, Nicky. Um, so, uh, very quick salsa, and we've got all the ingredients with here as well. So, um, the remainder of that tin of tomatoes goes in. Um, you don't have to wash the bowl out. A little bit of uh, avocado and with your salsa doesn't matter. Um, we're going to put some onion in there. So, again, uh, just chop. I'm probably going to do a bit more this time, about a quarter. I'll leave that bit out. That could, the rest of it can go into our uh, into our fajitas. So we'll get that in. That half clove of garlic. I'm going to use that up. That I might get a little bit more. I like it garlicky, so we'll have another clove, another half clove, another whole clove maybe. Isabel says, happy check the corn. Yes, just turn the corn. Thank you, Isabel. Do we know which Isabel that is? Isabel Giddings. Oh, hi, Isabel Giddings, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get that garlic in there. So, so far we've got onions, we've got uh, uh, tomatoes. Uh, we're gonna put some chili sauce in. You've got it, oh no, in fact, I'm gonna grab, plate here. Grab a couple of ingredients. I've got some fresh chilli for this one so we've just got a, uh, I've just de-seeded it just to, uh, this one was relatively hot so we'll just put, we'll chop it, we'll put some fresh chilli in there. It's going in. Okay, I'm gonna put some of this lovely orange pepper in. Now, you could put this on the barbecue first, uh, but we'll just, we'll just uh, put it in raw. Okay. You're all being very funny today. Helen is chuckling away, so uh, all right, let's get that pepper in. So again, you could put sugar in here. I'm not going to today. I think it's going to be sweet enough. Uh, but we're going to put the juice of a whole lime into this one. Uh, make it nice and acidic. So lime goes in. Give it a bit of a squeeze. Okay. 
because that corn is going to be pretty sweet when it goes in. Uh, so I've got my chili, garlic, onions, peppers, tomatoes, uh, they're all in there. Uh, I need a bit of um, black pepper, a little bit going in. Yes, I buy it already crushed, it's bad off me. A uh, bit of salt. Now, to add a little bit more sweetness, um, some good quality, and I like this my stuff, um, uh, balsamic vinegar. <laughs> Neighbours have had a good night. <laughs> Did everyone hear that? <laughs> right, so about a tablespoon of balsamic vinegar going in, and now my corn should be just about ready. I'm going to take it off a little bit early for this, but I'd ideally like to brown it off all over. That's not so bad. We'll take this one. I'll put that one in there for now. We'll take this one. We only need one. Um, now, what I'm going to do with this egg, I'll put that in there. Um, I, we're going to cook everything else now dirty. So I'm going to take this off. I've got a couple of peppers. Um, I want to brown off a bit. So, Andy, if you're looking in there, these are just going to go straight in the coals and in a couple of minutes, we'll come and turn them over. Okay, but that's going to cook those a little bit. Now, this is going to heat up. Um, we want it to be somewhere around 250 degrees. So I'm going to take this corn, hot. And all we're going to do is just run the knife down Go, take our corn off, put it into our salsa, and that that um, toasted bit will just give it a lovely smoky flavour. Um, really add to it. And then the last thing we need in there, again, a bit of coriander. Go through it. I'm going to keep some back to garnish at the end. So coriander's going in. Stalks, everything. Stalks have got amazing flavour. So just leave them in there. Bring this over. And we're going to blend this one. So again, I want to keep this chunky. Um, so don't blend it for too long. Stop it, take a look. When the lid opens, a little bit more. Put the stalks in there. Get them around the outside. Sort of a medium. And what you should see is we've now got a lovely salsa. Nice and fresh. Now, different people like it different ways. I love my salsa ice cold out of the fridge. However, I'm currently living with two people who don't. So um, I'm not gonna worry about it today, but that is ready now for half a heater. So I'll pop that back on there. Take that out of the way. And that's another dish done. So two dishes down, one to go. So let's have a look at our peppers. Charring up nicely, look. So we're just, just sitting on that heat, getting a bit of char on. Now I don't want to cook them all the way through till they're soft, but I do want to get a bit of char on. That black is going to be nice. Um, we might skin a little bit of that off, you can do. But what you just want to do is get that little toasted bit in there. They're looking epic. Right, give them a minute or two and then we'll, uh, uh, then we'll go on and move on to the steak. So let me just wash my hands a little bit. I'm going to put my apron on at this stage because it is going to get messy for me. Don't need to make this shirt number seven of the week. Or the sessions. So, any questions, Helena? Yeah, Ed Steinem says, did you get that shirt from Colin Miles? <laughs> so that was a question from Ed Stoneham, who lives down the village, in my village. Um, has just bought an egg. I don't know if he's got it yet. Um, I know he's getting one. Um, and he asked, did I buy this shirt from Colin Miles, uh, who has equally bad taste in shirts? Uh, no, uh, mine are a lot smaller than his. Oh, um, hopefully he's watching. Is Colin watching? I, I doubt know, it. Ed yeah, Ed is. Right. Anyway, right. When you are doing dirty cooking, do you have to use 
fresh terrell cold or can you mix it with existing? Okay, good question. So when you're doing dirty cooking, can you uh, do it with fresh charcoal or do you have, can you mix it with old charcoal? Um, this was old charcoal, so I just topped up um, from the previous cook like I'd normally do. So um, this is just the top layer of it. I'm gonna take these out because I'm happy with those. Just the top layer of the this um, was uh, of this charcoal um, uh, was new charcoal. The rest of it was old stuff. Um, so from the previous cook, simple as. So yeah, use uh, use just mix it together. What you do have, make sure it's lump wood. Um, this, if you if there's anyone out there watching who isn't a big green egg user uh, or a ceramic barbecue user and uses Weber and stuff, don't try this on briquettes. Um, briquettes, if you put a dirty cook on briquettes, it's like um, they're made of almost like sand. Um, and if you ever eat a steak or a uh, or any of these things that've been on briquettes, uh, you'll know it'll crunch. Um, this is just pure lovely charcoal um, so i'm just bringing the temperature up to about 250 which is roughly where it's sitting at perfect for cooking steaks okay any more questions Helena? Um, where's the chopping board from? Uh, the chopping board is a big green egg product um, it's beautiful i'd turn it over if it hadn't got stuff all on the, all over it um, the back is scooped out um, it makes a perfect serving bowl for pulled pork i'll try and show you in a minute um, no, it's a big, 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 big green egg product. It's made of solid teak with teak blocks glued together. Uh, it is a little bit pricey though, um, but it is beautiful. Where did you learn to cook? Where did I learn to cook? Um, great question. I grew up um, <laughs> cooking for my brother. Um, so I'm self-taught, simple as. I'm an IT project manager by trade. I'm not a chef, I'm a cook. Right, I need salt. Stay where you are, Andy. So let's show you. Go on. You obviously keep. Can you just tell them it should be lump wood, not limp wood, and I can't. Oh yes. Um, <laughs> Mrs. Smeat, <laughs> Mrs. Meat Smoke Fire. God, I nearly got that wrong. Has typed limp wood charcoal. It should be lump wood charcoal. <laughs> anyway, um, so this is a 700 gram piece. I'll pick it up. Piece of skirt steak. Now, what's different about a piece of skirt, if I fan it out, I don't know if you can see, can you see the lines going like this? Um, that is the grain of the meat. The grain is going along that way. Um, this has been frozen. This was from Booker's. It doesn't really matter. Um, in a normal state, the grain would come up through your steak and therefore it tastes more, um, uh, tastes more soft and, uh, and so on. So the steak, the grain's going a different way, which will mean when we cut it, we'll cut it across the grain to make it taste more tender. Um, so with this, all I'm gonna do, I'm give my hands a tiny wash, um, is I'm just gonna salt it. Okay. So again, mold and salt, I just keep it in a jar to keep it um, dry. Um, very liberal salt, a lot of this is gonna fall off. Um, get it on there, use your other hand, turn it over, same for the other side, Oops, that's a bit much on there but it, it will fall off. And now here comes, sorry that's on my trousers, I'll get shot for that. Um, <laughs> now here comes the bit that some of you um, probably haven't seen and think oh my god what's this going to be like but this is a great way of cooking steak. So we're up at 250 degrees um, perfect temperature for this so I'm going to open it up if you have a look in there Andy um, you can just see the charcoal's going I'm just gonna knock it about a little bit knock the worst of the ash off but that's it and then I'm going to take my steak you might want to get pan back a little bit Andy steak and it's just going straight in there okay it's straight on the charcoal um, that's what makes this dirty or caveman. Um, now we're going to pull the lid shut. Um, what this does, and you've got to try it. Um, when you, we do our, our barbecue classes here, um, these three eggs down here, we do, we do three different steaks, but we do one of the, uh, we cut them in half, or we have, no, so we don't cut them in half, we have six steaks. But at each station there are two steaks, we do one on a cast iron griddle and one dirty. 
and we do we do some um, skirt like this we do some normally some rump and then we'll do a ribeye uh, and you can decide which way you like it done best now skirt is one of those bits of steak that everybody loves cooked dirty it gives it a, a lovely smoky flavor um, it turns what is a five pound piece of steak into something you know nice and hot uh, nice and really tasty um, and it's just a different way of cooking it so try it um, what you'll see is when we go to turn it over there may be some um, charcoal stuck to it but we'll just turn it over we'll put it back on and then we'll knock those bits of charcoal off um, it doesn't get covered in ash um, you'd have thought it would but it doesn't uh, it just uh, it just goes uh, it just tastes absolutely amazing so anyway can you answer is um, skirt similar to bavette is skirt similar to bavette uh, let me get this right yes bavette is, yes very similar to bavette um, uh, you could use bavette yeah you could use bavette yeah it's just a french name uh, bavette might be the, the other further down the muscle I'm not exactly sure um, but uh, um, the other one you could try like this again is onglet another and that is the two the two muscles that run up uh, it's inside uh, the diaphragm and beautiful but right let's have a look so there's our steak in there cooking nicely um, I'm giving it two or three minutes aside um, so let's have a little turn let's have a little hook it up you're gonna see there's bits of charcoal on it flip it over but what you should be able to see can you see how it's browned up nicely you've got that crispness now this uh, where you've got a little bit of ash here when we rest it that will just fall off so don't worry about it um, so we're gonna pull that pull that shut uh, give that another couple of minutes to three minutes on each side what I'm looking for here is for that piece of steak to be uh, a rare to medium rare and the way I'm going to test that is just by I'll poke it with my finger now I can feel it's really soft at the moment so that means it's not it's not yet cooked um, so I'm going to give that two or three minutes right let's take some of our ingredients over we're done with a sous chef to, to clear up <laughs> currently working currently on the working yeah Right, don't let me forget that. We've got about two minutes on that. So, get that out of the way. Let's have a look at these onions. So we're just gonna take the ends off the onions. Both ends. Yeah. Cut them in half. And can you see how juicy they are? So, open those out. Still quite hot, so don't burn yourself on them when you're doing this. Just taking the outer layers off. I've cooked way too much, so I can throw away more than I actually need to. Same with this one. End off, end off. Now, if you get one that's, you know, not perfect inside, then it doesn't matter if you've cooked too much. I've said this will cook so four. Four, about four people, yeah. absolutely. Let's get those in a bowl that I have down here. Oh, I'll do the last one. And then we'll go and rescue that steak. Now I like it rare, so I don't want to overcook it too much. Um, and we are going to cook it a little bit again, right at the end. Um, so we'll get those off. And we're just going to slice those into chunky bits. There you go. That's our onion, ready. So let's go and rescue our steak. I'm just gonna wipe my hands, I'll wash my hands. In fact, I'll get the steak out. No, I'll wash these. Have a bit of foil. So I've a little bit of foil to put it on, but let's have a look at this. Oh yes. So Andy, if you want to come in and have a look, um, I'm just, I can feel it's still soft. This end is rare, this end is just gone past that. Um, so I'm just gonna grab it, take it off, and then the, any, you know, most of that um, bits here are salt. Um, so we'll take it off. That's our dirty steak done. I feel it 
nice and soft this end, a little bit more done that end. So I'm happy I can wrap it. If I, if I thought I'd taken it too far, if I'd gone past where I wanted it to be, I wouldn't wrap it as tightly, but I'm just gonna wrap it up and rest it for five minutes. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, so the question was, can you cook other meats dirty? Yes, you can. Um, um, the one to watch out for if you're gonna do it is lamb chops. Um, you can cook them because they're quite fatty, you'll get quite a lot of flare up. I don't know why I put my gloves on for this. That's making it more difficult, but. Um, so I'm just putting the expander grate a little bit higher up just so you can see it. Um, I'm gonna close that down and I'll grab the, uh, the skillet um, and then I'll carry on answering that question. So I just want to warm this up. Um, it's a cast iron skillet. Uh, it's the big green egg one. But any cast iron I do, a bit of, uh, bit of oil in there because we're going to fry off those onions and so on. Uh, we'll get that start warming through. So question, can you cook any other kind of meats dirty? Yes. Um, anything really um, we've done uh, well probably not anything sausages would probably be an absolute disaster that'd be taking it back to probably you know in proper British barbecue um, but yeah anything you want to do a nice big sear on works really well so uh, yeah give it a go lamb chops pork chops um, just watch it with the fattier foods just turn the temperature down a bit but um, uh, so don't go for 250 but yeah give it a go try it tastes amazing Helena any other Okay, ox cheeks. Oh, that's uh, that's. Uh, that, well, that's the same thing. So, yeah. So, uh, quite um, serendipitous, I guess. Yeah, we're doing beef cheeks tomorrow ourselves. So, um, beef cheeks uh, from the cheeks of the cow. Ox cheeks, same thing. Um, they require a really low and slow cook. So, you're going to cook them at 110 degrees, and they're going to take seven, eight hours, something like that. Um, so yeah, put them in and what you're trying to get them to do is the point where all the connective tissue within the meat uh, breaks down uh, and once that's break, broken down that they will become, they'll be really tough and then you'll watch them at, it's about 92 degrees centigrade internal to the meat, uh, use a thermometer uh, to check it, uh, but about 92 degrees you'll, you'll, they'll go from being shoe leather to they'll just start to melt. The other way you could do them obviously is to braise them so you can put them in a cast iron pan uh, and you could put some stock around them or some beer or something like that and cook them in that. They cook faster in that because you'll get better heat transfer. Um, but yeah, right. Let's go back and cut some of these up. I'm gonna steal one of these plates, just transfer it. And I'll get my sous chef to find another one from the kitchen in a minute. What do you do now? Plate in a minute, yeah, right. Those ones. Oh yeah. All right, get those out of the way. Um, all I'm going to do with peppers, just take the middle out, watch that they cool down, otherwise these middles will be absolutely boiling. Um, slice them in half and then just chop them into strips. So they are good. And I need that bit of garlic in there, but they're good and ready. Get the next one. I'm just using two peppers here. Uh, it doesn't matter what colour. Um, get them in. Slice them in half. If you are fussy, you can take um, any of that black skin off. Um, I think it's going to add to the taste. So, um, so we'll get those onto the plate. Right, got those. Uh, little piece of that. Oh. Now I just need to grab one more thing. Today's plug. Um, we're going to use a packet of seasoning. Normally I do everything from scratch, but um, I feel a little bit, I didn't actually work on this product, but I know um, Ben who runs Capsicana. Um, I did my second ever demo opposite Ben. We used his chilies to cook that day, um, which was great fun. I've been friends with him ever since. I've helped with some of his recipe development. And I've watched him go from a guy selling chilies on market stalls at farm shops in, the, in Hitchin, uh, and at the Gogs when I when I saw him, um, to a guy who now has a small company, 
are relatively small, but sells into Sainsbury's and Waitrose and Ocado and all of those. So we're going to use his seasoning today. Um, and it's a fabulous story that Ben's, you know, achieved this. Um, so yeah, I said to, he sent me these a, a little while ago. And I said, oh, one day I'll do a video with them. So uh, in fact, we ate the one that he sent us the other day. Um, so I went out and bought them from Sainsbury's yesterday. So we're going to use his sort his uh, spice mix. Right. So. Over here, I've just opened up again. It's a little bit low, still heating up that um, that pan. Um, but I want to get this all out. Um, oh, it's smoking nicely. So we'll just grab a wooden spoon. These can all go in. Yeah, we've got a bit of sizzle there. I'm going to start cooking these through. Now, obviously, both the peppers and the onions are part cooked already. So we're going to get those in there. And what we're going to do, while those cook, we're going to grab our uh, steak, take it over. I'm just going to wipe the board a tiny bit. Let's get rid of those. Right, let's have a look at this steak. Now, I like it rare in the middle. And what we're gonna do, can you see the juices in there are pink? And can you see most of the char bigger bits of charcoal have just fallen off, there's hardly anything on this. Now, if you were really fussy, you could pat it down. Um, so like that. But you can see there's very little coming off it, onto it. Um, but you've got to try this, just try it. Go with it, swipe the knife. There we go. And now, um, the grain of this steak is running that way. Now, I, so I'm going to cut it in half, and then I'm going to cut like this through it across the grain. You can see it's across the grain. The grain's coming like this. So we've got that, and that will make it tender, and it's nice and rare in the middle. But what we're going to do then is chuck it in that pan with the seasoning in a second. careful when you do that to put it like that so you can see what I'm doing. Again across the grain. Oh, sorry I've got to try this. Mm. Delicious. Getting lots of love for that. Mm. All I'm going to do is put it on top of this and then I will clean my board quickly. Thought we're competing with everyone today. We had the bottles from the neighbours, now the bin men are here. <laughs> Lockdown is definitely changing, the noise is getting louder. Right. Let's open this up. Quick juice. That's looking delish. Right. Let's get Ben's. Um, this is a, a cumin and chipotle uh, rub. So we'll get that, well, not rub, um, seasoning. So we'll get it in there. And give it a good stir around. I want to cook that out a little bit. So the egg is roughly 250, maybe a little bit lower, uh, but you want this to be searing hot, okay? So these are all nice and soft now. They're nice and covered in seasoning. So let's grab our meat, pop that in. Let's just get that juice. For those of you who've been on my uh, cooking classes, you'll be able to tell me that, that that red stuff that I just poured in there wasn't blood. Uh, the rest of you, you'll have to come on a class and I'll explain it. When we're allowed to reopen, obviously, so. This is the large skillet. Um, it is available on Big Green Egg's website. Um, it's also, if you want to give me a shout, I can uh, quote you for it. So maybe save you a tiny bit of money, I don't know. Right. 
That is looking delicious. Right, we we'll take this uh, grid over, put it on the table. That is cooked enough for my liking. So we're going to take that out, pop it over here. Um, stay where you are, Andy. Because what I want to do I don't make my own tortillas. Uh, I did once. In fact, it was for a competition for, um, for Capsicana. They used to run online cooking competitions. Um, so Helen and I, I made a video on their first ever one and we cooked our own corn tortillas, but I'm just gonna warm them up. So all they're gonna take is a few seconds. Flip them over. We'll just do the three, one each for us, for now. You'll see them puff up a little bit. Now you could pop the lid shut, but um, we're gonna be so quickly, I'm not gonna bother. Um, but if you were gonna do lots of them, I'd pull the lid shut in between, so it doesn't get hotter and hotter. You can see a little bit of steam coming out the side of these. Go. just warming them up ready for serving one last one any questions Helena yeah. um, lots of questions <laughs> recommendations for cooking lobster um, interesting we were discussing this only an hour ago um, we're dis we were discussing what we're going to do. I'm just going to pull this shut and, sh uh, and I'll leave it open. And I'll, I'll leave it just open so that we can continue cooking in a bit. Um, but yeah, lobster. Um, if you can and you can put yourself through it, buy them live. Um, then when you get them, put them in the freezer for a, an hour and a bit just before you want to um, cook them. Um, that will basically put them into a coma and then you can dispatch them um, by putting a knife, there's a cross on the on the top of their heads, and you just put a knife through and and um, yeah, cut, kill them. And then what I do is just split them literally down the middle in two. If you don't like the tamale and that's the the green stuff that's inside, take that out first, and then I just put them on and you do them um, flesh side down very quickly. Flip them over and then cook them, and you'll see the shell change colour. You'll see the meat go from um, opaque to, tran uh, to translucent. No, translucent to opaque, the other way around. So it will just go white and that's when they're cooked. Um, so yeah, but um, we might do it in two weeks time. So there you go. Um, yeah, somebody's got a, a, a big birthday coming up and it's about two days before the, the, the one if we do one in two, two weeks. So we were thinking we might be a bit special and do some surf and turf. Right, let's plate some of these up. I'm going to need some more plates. Um, okay, here we go. Yeah. Right. I've left my spoons over there. Let me grab my spoons. Let me grab my sour cream. This is the only bit I didn't make. So I'm just going to mix that. Just split a little bit in the gun. So a bit of sour cream on there. Get that on. Uh, a bit of our guacamole. Nice chunk of that, get it in there, spread it out. Bit of our salsa, spread that out nicely. And then, oh, I've left my spoon over here. Let's get some of our fajita mix in there. Bit more. That's probably gone a bit overboard, but hey, what the hell. And then we'll just sprinkle a little bit of coriander. This isn't the freshest, unfortunately. Bit of coriander on there. And then the way I like to eat them, fold the bottom up, roll the sides in, and you can pick it up. And of course, have it with a Corona beer. Anyway, there you go, there's our fajitas. So uh, yeah, quick and easy. Um, I should really take a bite, shouldn't I? Like, is Nigel on today? Okay, so we'll get in there. Oh yeah, oh, covered in it. 
Oh, sorry. Chef's perks. So cheers everybody. What about next week? So, questions already. Hopefully you've enjoyed that. Hopefully you can all do that home and it is so tasty. So do try it. That corn salsa, have it with tortilla chips. Um, have, it, have it however you want it. But uh, oh yeah, really good. Um, so I'll come out, let me come around here Andy and then. Um, so next week, um, what were we thinking? I forgot, got, totally pizza, gone. Pizza, we've had a lot of requests for pizza. Do people want pizzas? How I would do a pizza on the egg. Um, I think we're going to do surf and turf the following week, so we'll do some nice thick steaks and uh, and some lobster. Uh, we might mix it up a bit. The other idea we talked about was Spanish. So, would you like a tapas uh, kind of meal? So we could do tortilla, Spanish tortilla. So the potato and eggs and onions. Um, we could do some. Uh, what? Oh, I forgot the name again. The little. Uh, well, we could do some squid. We've got a great recipe for some squid. Um, sorry, uh, cameraman's pointing them at me. Apparently, I'm covered in uh, in torti in uh, fajitas. We could do some baked um, chorizo, or we can go down the pizza route if that's what you'd like to see. So, uh, type in the comments. Let us know. Um, but yeah, tell us you you tell us what you'd like us uh, us to cook next, and what techniques you'd like to see. So um, yeah, any any comments Helena? Uh, they are loving the idea of pizza. Loving uh, the idea of pizza apparently. Spanish sounds good. Spanish sounds good. Caramba for pizza for tapas. Oh tapas. Oh, Someone else has said bread as well. So Breads. Maybe... Okay so we've still got fish out there so one of the things we thought if we did Spanish was we've got um, um, Andy will love this we could do uh, we've got some little uh, some white bait. Yes. <laughs> Her favorite. So we could do some white bait um, we could do the um, um, what do they call bocorinos um so small white break uh fried we could do some anyway we'll, we'll we'll see what you put in the comments um any other questions helena no i can just remind people where the rub was from so the rub was from sainsbury's or no it's it's it's, it's capsicana the name of it yeah where's the packet there's, there's some. There's some. right so um you can look it's linked on on my web page but they're capsicana Hope you can see that. Um, we've used their fajita mix. Um, he's got a garlic and paprika one. Um, and this one, reading upside down, is Brazilian. So an Argentinian, a Brazilian, and a Mexican. Um, so Ben is a ma avid fan of South America. Um, has traveled there quite a bit, I believe, and uh, loves to develop um, spices around that. So he, he started out importing all of the chilies to be able to make these. And now he, uh, you know, produces these and they, sell in uh, in Sainsbury's and, and Waitrose and Ocado and several others so yeah look out for them um, don't fall for the brightly coloured um, Sainsbury's knockoffs of these um, he, sh he should be flattered that um, Sainsbury's have cop almost copied his packaging um, yeah which is great there, the other the other Mexican brands out there um, Old El Paso and Santa Fe aren't and you aren't a patch on these so uh, try them any other questions oh. How old is your um, egg table? This egg table here is seven years, well these two are seven years old. Um, so you can see they're all nice and grey. I don't do anything to them. I am the laziest person. Uh, they don't get covered, they get absolutely beaten up in the cookery schools. You know, I put tongs down that are covered in fat and oils, um, you know. So these two are seven years old. That one is about three years old and I'm hope, you know, trying to get it to, to age a little bit more. Um, I've got a great friend who might be on here, Paul White, down in yeah. Devon. We've mentioned him a few few weeks in a row now. Um, he has polished his table. It's almost like a mirror, uh, and he's varnished it, and it looks amazing. He, I guess, that just makes him, you know, curl and, you know, what's the word? For me, it's when you pick up cotton wool. I know that sounds t terrible. It's for other people. It's when they put their fingers down a blackboard. Um, that probably is doing that to Paul. That's seeing these tables. Um, good. Um, but his table is pristine. If you want to keep it pristine, use a cover. But these are seven years old. So, uh, yeah. Any other questions? No, not at the moment. Perfect. Well, we're a tiny bit over our 45 minutes. So hopefully you've enjoyed that. We'll sit down now and eat our lunch. Um, let's, yeah, 
do send pictures of, of, of you cooking this, it's simple. Um, all the recipes are already online on my website, so look on the top left hand side and there is a Saturday night takeaway section, go in there and it links to all the recipes. Um, we'll put the video up on YouTube, we'll put it up on Instagram TV. Um, so yeah, you can watch it again. Follow us and subscribe to us on YouTube if you can, it all helps. And yeah, if you, if you need anything Big Green Egg, do give me a shout. Um, uh, I am set up as a Big Green Egg reseller, so uh, I can help you out. Um, and of course, we also sell things like the thermopens and the, and the meters and so on, but you probably know that anyway. So uh, yeah, do give us a shout. But thank you for watching again. Next week, we will come up with a theme. What's, is it, what is it looking like? Pizza or? Pizza, pizza, uh, people are loving the idea of pizza and wings. Pizza and wings. Okay, pizza and wings maybe next week then. So we'll keep the Spanish till the week after my birthday. So week seven, uh, week six will be surf and turf. So um, yeah, look forward to it. So thanks for watching. Again, uh, contact me, nick, N-I-C, at meatsmokefire.co.uk. Uh, all my contact details are on the website. So uh, meatsmokefire.co.uk. Thank you for watching. Cheers, bye, have a great week.